But is living in a household with grandparents, parents, and kids really so terrible? Jonathan Coppage wrote on that subject for The Washington Post. He's a senior visiting fellow at the free market think tank R Street Institute and a contributing editor to the American Conservative. So you say we're repeating a pattern that used to be the case. That's absolutely right. What's important to recognize is that people living with their families is not at all a new trend, but rather the way that things used to be. We've taken to understanding ourselves through the lens of a very weird place in American history, which was the 1950s. But when you look at the greater sweep of our country's history, people lived with their parents uh, as a norm, and parents then lived with their kids. What was important is that they contributed. And it's not a matter of fact that living at home means that you're dependent. You can still absolutely be productive, but you can take advantage of the familial support. What accounts for this? So it's a really interesting trend. Um, some of this is delayed marriage. And uh, part of this is that in the 60s, we had the youngest marriage, uh, age, of mar age of first marriage in American history. And so we grew to expect that as the common pattern. And now we, ha we marry much later. And so we don't form independent households. And so we don't have a need for the younger people to acquire entire homes to themselves when they can be fiscally prudent by sharing the housing wealth of their parents. Jonathan, I think there's a stigma nevertheless associated with it. Let me show you a quick snippet from uh, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and then I'll make my point. Roll it. If you're a senior, you know Medicaid, almost half of Medicaid is about long-term health care. You want grandma living in the guest room? I mean, it's a pejorative the way she expresses it, right? Grandma mm -hmm. living in the guest room. Maybe grandma living in the guest room is a good thing. Grandma pitches in. She's with the grandkids. She loves those kids. She never gets to see them otherwise. I mean, is, I, I'm wondering what the stats would reveal if those negative headlines that I showed at the outset of the conversation weren't the case and more people were cool with the idea that, yeah, Junior is still living in the basement. Yes, absolutely. And what it is especially important for the grandma living in the guest room when uh, Speaker Pelosi is talking about Medicaid and care, we've taken to solving the problem of family dissolution with a lot of spending, whether it's, um, you, you know, whether it's young people spending money on very expensive apartments, whether it's older people spending a lot of money on very expensive housing situations. When the, you know, the patterns of you Youth and aging are not new phenomena in human history. We have traditionally solved them by relying on each other. And that is, comes at a cost that is free and allows us to provide mutual support. One final subject, you reference housing. The zoning laws of the country are not prepared for this trend. Explain. Exactly. So in the 1950s, that very extraordinary time, we passed a lot of laws to try and build a lot of housing very quickly for the young people who were coming home from the war. The problem is that we built everything around this idea of one massive cohort of young people coming in, getting married, and settling down. And so what we did is lose the ability to build more flexible forms, such as an accessory dwelling unit, what was literally called the granny flat, the mother-in-law unit. And we have passed zoning codes that make those almost impossible. And it's not even just local codes. It's important to recognize that federal financing greatly shaped the, the uh, formation of the American household and continues to today, whether it's main streets or whether it is accessory dwelling units and the ability to have the granny flat. If granny is going to live in the basement, that'll be fine. But if, if you want to build a tiny addition or maybe build out the garage, zoning might not allow it, is your point. Hey, it's a really mm -hmm. insightful piece. Thank you for writing it.